Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee and Ink and welcome back to Printer's Corner. This is where I answer all of your questions about garment decoration. And if you would like your question answered like this, you can use hashtag Printer's Corner and I'll pick those up for a future episode. This week's questions are all about print technique, making mistakes and using reg tape to line up your artwork on press. Stick around to the end of this episode to see the results from this week's community poll. The first question is from JT Bunker 27 and they said, great information. I can see that you have passion for your work. I notice you only do one print stroke. I do three. Am I wrong? Yes. Yeah, so when we print with plaster sol ink, there is a difference between printing plaster sol ink and water based. I'm just going to tell you about plaster sol ink at first. We always do one flood. This is where you're covering the whole image area with ink. And then we only do one print stroke. And this is mainly just down to practice and experience and knowing that I can clear the mesh with just one stroke. And what you tend to see with new printers is that they might be doing one, two, three floods, and then they have, then they're thinking that they have to do lots of print strokes as well. And this is probably just a confidence thing. They think they're not covering the whole screen with ink. And then they might think that with their print stroke, they're not clearing the whole screen with ink. So what I would say is that ideally what you want to be doing is one flood and one print but it is a little bit easier said than done. There is something that I noticed with a lot of new printers as well, is that the squeegee they're using isn't covering the whole width of the image. So then they're printing the left side and then maybe the right side and then maybe the center just to make sure the image is clear. But that's such an easy fix. Just try and, I know you have to invest in this kit, but your squeegee is really, really important. So make sure your squeegee is a couple of centimeters wider than the widest part of the image that you're printing and that might cut down on the amount of print strokes that you're having to do. Um, all of this becomes really important when you have a large print run because you need to be as speedy and economical as possible and you need to make sure that you're heating your shirts as they go around and underneath the flash they all have to be heated to the same temperature or you can overheat one of the shirts for example. So getting it right now before you start investing in kit like flashes and things is really important. However, I need to tell you about printing with water-based ink and how that's a little bit different to the Plastisol. So we went to Magna Colors and they are an ink manufacturer, a water-based ink manufacturer. And on their automatic press, they had one flood stroke as normal. So just fill the whole mesh up with the ink, but then they had two print strokes and I asked him about this and he said it's to make sure that that mesh is cleared with the ink but also when you're printing with water-based ink it's really important to drive the ink into the surface of the garment not just have it sitting on the top so if you're trying to emulate that with your own manual screen printing you could just make sure that you're clearing the mesh twice if you're printing with water-based ink the second question is from Embassy Kingdom 999 and they said, hashtag printers corner, Chessie, you good? It, it always looks like you don't mess up. Have your prints ever faded or washed off? Um, yeah, they have. This is something I've actually gone through myself where it really did go wrong was we were printing an edition of prints for our own brand and we released them and quite quickly somebody bought it online. So we had loads of them in the shop and someone bought it online. And then we'd done our own wash tests on them, but this particular design was uh, quite unusual for us. So it was a vintage dyed t-shirt. We had a discharge base and then we put loads of colors of loads of layers of plastic on top of it. And I think when the person got this shirt, they washed it as normal probably for them. And then it really didn't hold up. The top layers were coming basically off the bottom layer. So it was quite horrible, but thankfully they told us about it before we sold the whole batch of shirts. So in that circumstance, we just had to take them back. 
And then we had to do our own tests on why the discharge base isn't compatible with the plasol. And also it's very misleading because it actually felt like it was a good, good product the first time we washed it. It seems to be like only when you, on your second or third wash in that particular circumstance that it did deteriorate. But the answer is just give them a new shirt, maybe a different design that you know 100% is going to be perfect. If you're trying stuff, try it out a few times in your studio, do tons of wash tests and just make sure, I suppose. But everyone can get something wrong. It's just how you rectify the situation. Our final question is, well, it's more of a comment, is from Crumpet1990. And they said, uh, I use reg tape for registering. It's much quicker. Um, I would like to dispute that. So what they're saying is that when they're registering screens, they put a t-shirt down, then they use a clear piece of registration tape. They print their first layer onto the registration tape, make sure it's touch dry, and then they register the next layers to the first printed layer in the design. So they're probably registering to the registration marks that they've just printed. Um, I think there's lots of errors that can come up in here. So for example, the registration tape is very lightly tacked onto a t-shirt and there's some room for movement there. So if you're thinking about accuracy, there's there's something built in there which already can go wrong. Um, there's also this whole thing about when you're when you're printing when you're trying to register up the screens. If you're registering to something that's already printed, you have to kind of take into consideration that that print has been deposited onto the substrate onto the registration tape at an angle already. And it just depends on like the angle that the squeegee deposited the ink down onto the product. So, so then when you're registering your second screen and you're looking at it, you're not registering to this, the thing that's being exposed onto the screen. You're registering up to something that's already been printed. So you kind of have to accommodate for that angle that was put the, put the, put the ink down onto the tape. So I feel like you're building in lots of errors so that if you get around to the six color, you're going to be doing so much more work, like trying to wipe off the ink, trying to get it to line up with the angle that you used the last time. It just seems a little bit um, of a long way round of doing it. So even if you think you can register it quicker, um, I'd like to do a race. But for me, it's more about accuracy because if I don't have to re-register any of my screens, then I've done this process in one go, whereas you might have done it and you might have got like a, one of your colors off and then you've got to do the whole process again. So I'm going to go with sticking the film positive down to the platen as my still preferred method of registering screens. Um, let me know in the comments if you still disagree with me, if you think that I'm wrong or you've actually tested it, I'd love to know. And there's also one other thing, which is when you are registering screens, it's probably the most important thing isn't really reg tape or ex like registering up to the film. It's making sure that all of your screens have the same or similar tension in them. So something that's really, really crucial is to have a tension meter to measure the actual tension of the screens, especially if you're doing quite a difficult multicolor image. Um, we use the tension meter from Sherlock and you can get the Sherlock tension meter off their website, which is just sherlock.com. And you can use code meter to get money off it. Or you can use the discount code, which is CRP5 site-wide to get money off their meshes and their screens. So again, let me know in the comments your preferred method of registering multicolor jobs. It's now time to see the results from this week's community poll. Community poll. The question this week was, is post exposure necessary? And the options were always only for water-based prints, or if it didn't expose the first time, it won't help. And 50% of you said you always do post exposure 
that's really interesting because I don't do post exposure myself. Um, and I wonder if it's not, if it's that you're not trusting your exposure units or whether you might as well leave the screens out in the sun to dry and potentially harden more if you're using a particular type of emulsion. Let me know in the comments whether you believe in post exposure, if you think anything else is happening, or whether it depends on the type of emulsion, or even if you've got sun, like a sunny environment to leave your screens out in. Just let us know in the comments your kind of thoughts on that. The main question for this week's episode was how many floods and print strokes to use when printing t-shirts? And my answer is one flood and one print stroke for Plastisol and one flood and two print strokes for water-based ink. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of next week's episode and use hashtag printers corner and make sure to vote in the community poll, which you can find on the community tab on our YouTube channel. Thank <laughs> you.